to Let's Talk College Football. Nothing but college football, everybody. This is Let's Talk College Football for the week of October 1st. Plenty of big games to talk about. Of course, I'll have my five picks at the end of the show. We'll review my last five picks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I fell back down to uh, planet Earth as opposed to being on cloud nine. Also, too, good, bad, and the ugly. And we will start the show, of course, with the Big 12s. Thumbs up and thumbs down. And of course, we have to start with thumbs up, and for the Baylor Bears, definitely thumbs up. They are still undefeated, and in their most recent game, a home win over Oklahoma State, they got plenty of big plays, and they did a good job in limiting the big plays. Good formula, as Baylor, again, remains undefeated. And it's hard to be critical of the Mountaineers. All they've done is win, and the most recent game, bit of a challenge against BYU, who's had a pretty tough schedule, but West Virginia found a way in the end outscoring BYU and going to a perfect 3-0. Of course, Mountaineers have their Big 12 opener coming up this weekend against Kansas State. And thumbs down, thumbs down, the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Yeah, they were an underdog entering the Baylor game, but when you watch this game, you're going to think, man, they could have won that one. The old saying, you turn it over three times, you should lose. You turn it over four, you're going to lose, and Oklahoma State lost. Four turnovers, just too much to overcome for the Pokes. And as always, we talk about the good first. And if you're a Wisconsin Badger fan, it's been more than good. It's been great. The team has simply put overachieved. Some thought might be rebuilding gear, but the defense continues to beat stellar. And the play of Alex Hornibrook, the freshman QB, pretty good too. And Wisconsin coming off a huge win in East Lansing against Michigan State. And sometimes you don't have to always be great, just great when you have to be. Stanford was great in the final minute of their game against UCLA, coming up with a game-winning score, and then another touchdown just to, I guess, make the odds makers happy because Stanford ended up covering the spread in the process, if you're into that kind of thing. The Cardinal, they remain perfect as well as they get a big win at the Rose Bowl against the Bruins. And it was rocky for Rocky Top Tennessee. At least uh, most of the first half it was, down 21-3. Second half, a much different volunteer team. Josh Dobbs, the QB and company, finally calmed down and played better offensive ball. And the defense stepped up in Tennessee's come-from-behind win over the Gators, their first over Florida in 12 years. And Kevin Semlin might have went from the hot seat to having a team that's just hot. Right now, perfect record for the Aggies as they handle Arkansas. Trevor Knight, he may not have stellar numbers right now, but he's managing the offensive boat well for the Aggies. Texas A&M already looking like a different team than what we've seen in previous seasons. Well, just like in life, in football, you can't have good without bad. And Georgia, they were bad this past week. Look, we knew they weren't going to win every game this year, but Kirby Sparks' team, I'm telling you, you expect more than just getting embarrassed at Ole Miss like they did. You might think, well, Nick Chubb got hurt in the second quarter and didn't come back. All right? But they were still getting beat badly before that injury. In fact, their running game so far this year has been less than impressive. Who knows if Chubb will play this week. Georgia's road gets no easier. They'll play undefeated Tennessee on Saturday. And what's going on in the Pacific Northwest? Eugene, Oregon, more specifically, as Oregon, for the second time already this season, falters. This time at the hands of Colorado, who is a rising team in the league. But still, you got to think, Oregon, there are some problems, especially defensively. And LSU, they're now 2-2. Two and two. Most recent loss coming to Auburn in heartbreaking fashion. Looked like LSU might have scored on the final play of the game. Officials, though, did get it right. Touchdown didn't count because there was no time on the clock when the ball was snapped. Time ran out on LSU, and it ran out on Les Miles as well. Fired shortly after. He's won over 75% of his games since becoming coach of the Bayou Bengals, coaching two national championship games, won a national title, 
and coached in the toughest division in all of college football, the SEC West, and yet they still fired him. <laughs> Seems premature, you think, but hell, what do I know? He'll coach somewhere, someday, and wherever he coaches, you can rest assured, they're going to win. And for the ugly this week, look, they might share 15 national championships between them, but this year, they also share six defeats in the month of September. Well, can only get better right for USC and for Notre Dame, and you have to wonder what the future for their head coaches hold. Clay Hilton, yeah, they suffered their third loss in the last uh, week, courtesy of Utah, and for Notre Dame, losing at home to Duke, yeah, Notre Dame was a three-touchdown favorite. Defensively, there are problems. In fact, they just fired their defensive coordinator. Brian Kelly seems to lay the responsibility on the players and not on himself. So, yeah, you have a feeling that it's going to get worse before it gets better in Los Angeles as well as in South Bend. Well, it may not have been complete ugly as far as my picks last week, but it wasn't a work of art either. We're a couple of wins thanks to Tennessee and their big comeback, not only winning against Florida, but covering the spread. So thank you, volunteers, and thank you, Sun Devils, for that ultimate backdoor cover, the late touchdown against Cal, in which you basically put icing on the cake and made me happy. So there's my second one there. But that's when the winning stopped for yours truly. I lost my other three games. No thanks to Michigan State getting their butts kicked in the second half to Wisconsin. Michigan State was favored, and you have to wonder, yeah, was the wrong team favorite? Signs point to yes on that one. Well, Arkansas wasn't favored against AM, and I really like my odds on this one, you know, taking the points. And, you know, for the first half it looked good, and then the second half you could tell that AM was the better team, and maybe the injuries were also adding up for the Hogs. AM easily covers, so I lose that one. And the total between Oklahoma State and Baylor was 80, and I took the over, and I took a kick in the ass because both teams. Uh, combined for only 59 points, which by Big 12 standards is actually uh, a defensive game. So I ended up losing the game there because it was under 80. So two and three, again, not a work of art. So I lose the battle, but I'm still winning the war in terms of the picks for the season. Barely above water, eight and seven, a game above 500. Let's see if we can build upon it this week with five more selections. All right, let's go ahead and pick my five games for the week. We're going to begin in the Big 12. Stillwater's the place. It's Texas with their Big 12 opener at Stillwater to take on Oklahoma State. And I think you know what I'm about to say because I've said it several years and it has not changed. In this rivalry, the road team has won every single time since 2009. If you keep your track at home, that's the last seven games between the Longhorns and the Cowboys. If you're the home team, that's trouble. Who'd ever think of a stat like that? I'm going to take Texas because you know why? The game's in Stillwater, okay? Pretty simple. And in this case, the Longhorns are getting two points, all right? They're actually getting points in this one. And, you know, even more reason to take the Longhorns. They haven't lost in Stillwater this decade. You get back to 1997, the last time any Texas team got beat at OSU. And, again, the road team, it's been golden for them in this series. So give me Texas plus the two at Oklahoma State. Game of the week, one of the biggest games of the year in college football. Could go a long way toward deciding the ACC championship. Louisville at Clemson. We get to finally find out what Louisville is like on the road in a big game. Of course, it's going to be the battle of quarterbacks, Lamar Jackson of Louisville. Of course, Deshaun Watson of Clemson. Clemson is now an underdog in this game. A two-point underdog, even though they opened as the favorite at the beginning of the week. But people really love Louisville. There's a trend that you probably know about. Anytime you have the majority, or in this case, most people, betting one side in a big game, that's a trap. Take the other side. I'm taking the other side. I'm taking Clemson in this case. I'm taking the Tigers, despite the fact that the Vegas line has swayed toward Louisville. You give me Clemson. They're going to have home field advantage, and they've got more big game experience in this case. So give me Clemson plus the two. Oklahoma and TCU, we're going to bet the total on this game, and I don't have confidence in either defense. Yes, I'm a diehard Sooner fan, as you know, but I don't have a whole lot of confidence that the Sooners are going to be able to shut down TCU. I think OU will win, but I think 
they're going to give up a lot of points, but I think TCU is going to give up a lot of points as well. So the total is 69.5. Give me the over. You got Wisconsin at Michigan. Another huge game. This is a massive game. Again, we get to find out if Wisconsin can deliver. Of course, they had a tough schedule, beat LSU, and of course, last week won at Michigan State, who at the time was in the top five. Normally, you would take the team with the tougher schedule and the momentum, which in this case is Wisconsin, playing at the big house, and you'd still take the team with the momentum, right? Wisconsin has been pretty banged up, you know, the backfield and definitely on the offensive line. Michigan's defense is very, very good, and I think the passing game of Michigan will make the difference. Plus, playing at home at the big house in front of 110,000 fans doesn't hurt your cause either. It's a big spread, but I think Michigan wins this game. I think they win it by at least two touchdowns. So give me the Wolverines minus the 10 and a half. And in honor of our armed forces, the men and women who protect us, who give us freedom, whose sacrifices, whose efforts, whose hard work and dedication can never be taken for granted, we're going to pick Navy at Air Force. And again, thanks to all the men and women for your past and present service. Navy's not quite the same team as they were a year ago. You remember Navy, the double-digit winning team? They lost so much talent off that team. Air Force, I think, covers the spread in this one. Give me the Falcons of Air Force minus the seven. That does it for my five picks for the week. Don't forget, my post game of OU at TCU will be sometime Saturday evening. So please check that out. And thanks for watching. Let's talk college football. See you next time.